Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it is 2.56 in the a.m. For the last hour and 50 minutes, I've been taking care of some editing of documents and paying out some invoices because this is the beginning of a pay period and the ending of a pay period for the organizations with an S. And let's just say this is a nonstop thing that I do. Now, I'm not bragging and I'm not looking for sympathy and I'm not looking for empathy. I'm just letting you know that the amount of work. Now, somebody just brought something to my attention yesterday. They were talking about goodwill. And the IRS refers to it as benefits. And they, I forgot the exact name that they referred to it as, but do you know that you can receive tax credits for your volunteering of your services to an organization? Of course you did. So did I. That's why I keep telling people that I am the only one at the organizations that get to volunteer my time. I'm not an employee. I volunteer my time. Why? Because it's my choice. I just made it to a point to where nobody else could do it. Why did you do that? That sounds selfish. No. I don't want anyone claiming that they did everything for SACOM. I already have one individual who keeps saying she's doing everything for me. And I let her know that that will never be the case. At the organizations, no matter which one I ever put together, you all come first. I know you don't feel that way all the time because there's just too many of you. So we have to do it in the you all come first, as in your interests as a collective comes first, then your personal interests come second. So let us do a little bit of explaining if we shall. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing AMCF Real Estate Private Foundational Trust Organization. Today is the official the 28th of October, the official start of this organization, and those of you who have signed up thus far, and I, this is, you have no idea, probably the most stressful and the most time-consuming project that we've ever started. Why? Because there are almost 20 separate documents associated with this organization that will be applied to each con um, client. Some of the documents are essential. At least four of the documents are necessary just to document the record. And another five of the documents are padding so that nobody can say that we missed a step. You see, I've been doing this court thing for a while, going in and out of courts. Ladies and gentlemen, our job is to keep you out of court. But let's say somebody wants to bring you to court then we will have the documentation and you will have my willingness to testify. That's a lot of people to testify for. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to make sure that the documents will speak for themselves. But if they need somebody who's got experience because they cannot, and to this day, nobody has ever challenged my ability to be an expert at the information I talk about. Not a single court has ever done that. Now, they'll say things on the record, but they will never call me in to challenge me. And the reason why they will never do it is because they can never answer any of my questions. That's the only way it can be. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me tell you what the organization will do for you. The first thing when you go to the site, you'll come to the welcome page. Welcome home, because it's all about the home. Ladies and gentlemen, on the welcomes page, you'll see that every page has the very same video at the top. The factory. And see, one coin factory. The next thing you have is, uh-oh, we will, we will correct the spelling. I'm sorry, someone's working on a spelling error. I just had to do some amendments to the site, so they're working on a spelling error. When I was doing the site, I want to let you know, there was a lot of fatigue, but voice recognition oftentimes add extra letters. The words are spelled correctly, but it will add an extra letter every once in a while. And, sorry, 
there is somebody else who will go over it, just in case I miss something, because this is my first time catching that. So anyway, looking to our website. Here at Artful, the AMCF Real Estate Private Foundational Trust Organization, or Private Trust Foundation Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, we know and realize how important your home is to you, how important your property is to you, how important your possessions are to you, how important your interests are to you, your estate, your family inheritance. The investment capabilities are profound. Many of you don't realize that if you look at your deed of trust, there is a section. Go ahead, take the time. Look at section 18. Section 18, paragraph number 2 says that if the borrower was to sell the home without the lender's consent, so I want you to pay attention to what it says. If the borrower was to sell the home without the lender's consent, the lender could accelerate the loan and demand full payment. But hold on. Let's break it down to you. That gives you the right to sell your own home, even though you're supposedly in a deed of so-called trust. So we're going to give you three points to prove that you always had the right to sell your own home. So with this process, you will be required to take your property and place it into a trust. You will be able to create your own trust. We will even provide you with a sample trust. We'll tell you where you can go to get a sample trust. It's just a simple matter of placing the property into a trust and putting it into the, at the very end of the trust, there is a listing of properties and assets. And that's where you're going to put it. Look, many of you are going to want to put your cars and your moccasins and all these other things. Please, just the house for now. After you create the trust, you can add all of those other items later. But for right now, you'll just be doing the house. Well, I already put mine in a trust. Is that okay? That is more than fine. Now, those of you who don't have the know-how and the knowledge and you want to secure everything, you are completely, completely given permission to place it in our trust. If you place it in our trust, we have a cover letter. I don't have it pulled up, and I should have had it pulled up, and I'll do another video on the cover letter that's sent out to everyone. And you'll receive a copy of that information, part of it, when you get a receipt. That will let you know that we will at no time ever attempt to steal, take, or condemn, or seize your property from you. That's not how we work. We don't want your property. We don't need your property as an organization. Now, you will assign the equitable interest in the property to us. And that's only because we cannot operate in the interest of the property without having a vested interest in the property. That's to keep them from telling us we don't have a say-so, ignoring the po limited power of attorney. My job was to do everything I could to protect your interests at the same time while not stealing your interests, taking your interests, or having anybody say that we were trying to commit fraud, we were trying to defraud you. As I told you, the organization is not a, an organization of Jehovah's Witnesses. However, I am a Jehovah's Witness. And as such, by using that name, I am letting you know that I don't have the ability of defrauding any person on this planet, of doing any person wrong. Did that once. <laughs> that didn't turn out too well. I'm being serious when I say that. Can't use his name and then think you are going to be able to get over on people. He won't allow it. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't believe. It doesn't matter if you don't have faith. What matters is the fact that you're hearing me say this because I believe and I have faith. I'm a person of my word. So my interest is to protect your interests. Do you understand that? That's what m my interest is to protect your interests. That's what I'm here to do is to protect you, to protect your property. So that you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of time. It is extremely time consuming. However, this is for you. This is not for me. People say, what are you getting out of it? I'm not getting anything out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, for all the work that we're about to do, I told you 20 different documents, and we are helping to process and file most of this. 
you are only charged with filing five of the documents. Well, when we say filing, please understand something. Three of the documents you're mailing out. Those are three of the initial documents. Your trust agreement, you will never show to anyone else. Okay? you No one else needs to see it. If the court orders it, subpoenas it, you will challenge the subpoena. No one needs to see your trust, but you will have to prove to us that you created it. You don't file the trust on the record. Pay attention. Many people have been filing their trust on the record. We filed your trust on the record at SACOM because your trust included the affidavit. It included several other aspects, so that was necessary. But you will not file this trust anywhere on the record. You will file the certificate of trust. People say, well, that usually provides... No, there is no law that says they have to provide somebody's certificate of trust and a declaration of trust. Those are the two documents you will file on the record. Okay, along with the other documents that we will inform you of. Everything else we will take care of, we will process. Is there a court involved? Yes, one court. You'll find out about that later. But you, in this court, <laughs> you won't have to prove anything. And the court we're taking you to, nobody can ask for a dismissal. Nobody can say, Your Honor, I ask that you dismiss this case for failure to state a claim. Uh, won't happen here. This has taken a lot of time to figure out because my job is to get around all their catches. You know, because they always have a, a catch for you. When you receive the email, initially, you will be given a specific address for to communicate from this point forward. You will no longer use the support email. For those of you who need to contact support, you will simply go to the Contact Us location, very bottom of the page. There is a support section. Okay, the rest of you, if you need to communicate anything like Sending documents. Do not send documents in advance. We did not ask for anybody to send documents yet, and people have been sending documents. Those documents, they will not go in any file because they're being sent to the wrong email. Like I said, there is a process that must be followed. We protect your interests. You have not heard of any data breaches at SACOM. You've not heard of anybody claiming that their accounts have been hacked into or somebody's been using their information. We are a compartmentalized organization. Just basically like each one of these windows, to explain what compartmentalized means when I say it, this department is aware of this department and this department and this department and this department and this department, but neither one of them are aware of everything that's inside each department. Not every individual in the organization is part of all of the departments. I don't even know what goes on over here and here. That's on purpose. Well, because people like to claim that people are trying to commit fraud. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they like to claim that there's a conspiracy. Compartmentalizing the organization will get rid of that stupid argument. We protect your interests. The law requires that we have a security mechanism in place to protect your interests. Now, I keep telling everybody, we'll take care of the security on this site, but you don't need to worry about security on this site because the payment site is 100% secure. When you get a chance, when you click on the payment, look up here and make sure that you have that lock. Sorry, I've been too busy to call the company and tell them, hey, take care of that security. But the site is secure. It does have SSL um, coding. So you may not know what all of that is. That's just to let you know that the site is protected. Most people are concerned about that. Because this site just went up this week, uh, just haven't had the time. Sorry. Like I told you, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, and I've been working on this for the last three weeks. We've been working on a whole program for longer than that, but I was given someone else the opportunity to create the website, and they ran into some glitches. And so I had to step in and put together something. I personally, I like it. Especially the idea of putting together this top section. Now, people say, well, it's just a website. No, it's much more than a website. See, the first thing I had to do is I had to make sure I didn't give too much information, make it legal. This is why we can do this and why we can do that, because you don't need that. 
I didn't want to make it like the Amer Legion website, which was necessary. Oh, this is what we need to let you guys know. Sorry, I've been waiting to say this to you, and I almost forgot to mention it. Those of you who are part of Amer Legion, you've been wondering why things have been going a little so slow. Well, the reason why things have been going a little slow is because you are also part of the Save Our Homes program. Those of you who have student loans or mortgages or car loans and you've gone into the program, well, we are going to incorporate you into the program. Now, remember, you've already been started, but however, to incorporate you into the program will require these documents to be processed for you as well. So be patient with us, please. Okay, remember, this wasn't part of the program when we first offered it to you. We decided to give it to the people who are part of the American Legion, the Amera Legion, but it's an American Legion offshoot. We decided to put you guys into this program. I hope that's okay. You know, I've done all this talking and I did not check to make sure my speakers and everything are on. So give me a second, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure we are... Yes. See, I have to make sure of that because I could be talking for 16 minutes and you guys get a video that has no sound. And so I need to make sure that the sound is working because there is an AI system that interferes. And it does a pretty good job. Some of you have seen the experiences. Some people will ask, well, why don't you do a special channels for all the different organizations? Because then that means that I would have to log into each one of these channels. And Google associates the channels with whom they're associated with. They would end up shutting down all the channels. Because that's what Google does. I'm sorry, Skynet. I apologize, Skynet. All right, let's continue, shall we? Details and payment page here. This link, let me check it because I never corrected it. So this link may or may not work because I made some changes to certain things. And so you see, this page doesn't work and I'll have to recorrect that because it should, the dots, you see it says T period, O period. It can't have that. So we'll take care of that. And that's that's the problem. We will take care of that. I just, again, just realized that when I saw the link. Like, there's a lot of aspects to the website, so that will be corrected. Ladies and gentlemen, mortgage fraud is a trillion dollar international business. Every country does the exact same thing. People ask, is the same understanding of law in Britain as it is in America, in New Zealand as it is in Britain? Ladies and gentlemen, yes it is, because it's the same international bankers. Remember, the banking laws are universal. Why? They had to make it universal. That's why we have the World Trade Organization. Okay? That's why we have the G7. Because they had to make everything universal. Got something I need to explain. I need you all to hold on for just a second. And I gotta keep doing this because of the way the system is set up right now. This should be overlaid, but it's not overlaid. So... Give it a second. I don't want to hit the wrong button and shut y'all off. We got a lot to talk about, but the next bit of information is going to be more beneficial than most of what I've already said. So give me a momento to explain. I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's allergy season for me. Every spring, every fall. Do not tell me about honey. Do not tell me about your remedies. I'm okay with it. Been dealing with it for years. I'm okay. It's not stressing me out. It's not causing me to want to die or anything like that. So we're going to be just fine. Let's continue with the video, if that's okay with the rest of you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, mortgage fraud is a multi-trillion dollar industry. It's an industry because they do this on a regular basis. It is a routine. It is sponsored by every state government. It is sponsored by the courts. It is sponsored by judges. It is sponsored by the executive branch. It, ex it is sponsored by Congress. Why? Because everybody is invested. 401ks, pensions, everybody is invested into some form of the mortgage industry, including the prisons. All you got to do is a little bit of understanding 
and a little bit of research to find this out. So it is not easy to challenge the status quo. However, the, and pay attention, this is stat 59. So 59 stat 237 subsection 2. 59 stat 237 subsection 2. 59 stat 237 subsection 2. We said 59 stat 238, but it is 59 stat 237 subsection 2. 238 will still get it, get you what you need, but it will be at the very top of that, and it's only half of the paragraph. Well, not even half. It's a little bit shorter than a quarter of the paragraph. So, stat 59, page 237. Statute at large, 59, page 237. So, 59, stat 237, subsection 2. I'm saying it repeatedly so you'll get it in your head, you'll have it in your mind. Now, you don't need to explain to them that any Federal Reserve Bank includes you. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Let's just deal with it. Let's just think that it's uh, just a regular bank, regular Federal Reserve Bank, regular Federal Reserve agent, any Federal Reserve Bank. So that agent takes that note and that application that comes from you. Because the banks can't write promissory notes. Say that again. The banks cannot write promissory notes. There is no statutory authority for a bank to write a promissory note. Just pay attention. The banks cannot promise to pay. They are corporations. The banks cannot promise to pay. They are corporations. You must understand what a promise is. A corporation cannot make a promise. I don't care if E.F. Hutton was standing right there next to you and he says, I'm the representative of the corporation and we make a promise to you. No. They can say it in words all day long, but they do not qualify for making promises. Their word is not their bond. You are man or i.e. woman. You can bond your words. You can be liable for what you say. You can bond your words. Corporations can assume liability for what they say. That's because they're represented by a group of individuals whose word is bond. But you cannot do a promise to pay as a corporation. Some people will say, no, that they can do that. No, they can't. Corporation cannot bond their word and a promise to pay. Go back and look at the statute. Go back and look. At promissory notes, they are done by people. So let's get that out of the way. Let's just say that any Federal Reserve Bank, as defined in the Act, is Federal Reserve Banks and doesn't include you. Okay, let, let's just say that that's the case. So let's go to the Federal Reserve website and let's read the stat. This is the federalreserve.gov website about the Fed, all one word, about the Fed. So federalreserve.gov forward slash about the Fed forward slash section 16 dot htm. Ladies and gentlemen, htm, we're going to go to section 2. Applications by Federal Reserve Banks. Any Federal Reserve Bank. So let's just say this is just the Federal Reserve Bank. Let's not use the word any. Let's say this is... The Federal Reserve Bank may make an application to the local Federal Reserve agent for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes. I know it doesn't make sense if you read it that way, but let's just say that's what it is. Here and before provided for as it may require, such application shall be accompanied by or with a tender to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes thus applied for and issued pursuant to the application. The collateral security thus offered shall be notes. Okay, so we're going to say promissory notes is included in notes. Let's say that someone says, well, this is talking about the banks. This is what the banks do. But pay attention. Oh, that's right. But see, when I filled out the application and gave the promissory note, well, I gave it to the Federal Reserve agent. And then he, in turn, gave it to the Federal Reserve Bank. And it was an application for Federal Reserve notes. So it doesn't matter if this doesn't apply to me. What matters is what the Federal Reserve agent did with the promissory note in the application. And because this is the Federal Reserve Act, these are the procedures for applying for Federal Reserve notes. 
See, application for notes by the Federal Reserve Banks. So because there was a note and application involved in my situation, that means I tendered payment. And if I tendered payment, there's no deed of trust. Deed of trust has been satisfied. Once they receive the Federal Reserve notes, well, they have up to 90 days to receive the Federal Reserve notes, and it is presumed since they did not refuse tender and since they have not given me any indication that they have not received the Federal Reserve notes, then I'm going to presume that they followed the act as written. And because they followed the act as written, deed of trust is, doesn't exist anymore. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you another key pointer. Look at section D, uh, 23 of your deed of trust. Now, I want you to pause the video right now. Go pull up a sample deed of trust. Pause the video. Some of you are not going to listen. You're going to, I'm going to wait until after you finish, and then I'll go pause the video. Ladies and gentlemen, pause the video. Y'all don't get to do what y'all want. Pause. Okay, that was enough time for you all to go ahead and read section 23. Section 23 in some states says reconveyance. Section 23 in other states says release. No matter what, it says upon full payment, they're supposed to mark the note paid in full. Ladies and gentlemen, it says of collateral in an amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes that's applied for, and that the collateral must be equal to the application. So it must be for the total amount of the loan. You look at section 23. That's what you did. Total amount of the loan. Now, that's not enough. You can't just go in there saying that because that's not going to be enough. There are other things that have to be done according to the law. And here's the problem with the law. The law is all over the place. You might find this section. Look at where we had to go to find this section. So then you're going to find another section on section 23. Then we're going to find another section on trust. And we're going to find another section on deed of trust. And we're going to find case law talking about this and talking about tender of payment. Well, we've taken all of that and put it together in a package. Why? Because I told you, Miss Maxine Waters, and even though I haven't spoken to Maxine since the early 90s, and yes, she's completely changed, or maybe she didn't change, maybe that's the way she's always been, but Miss Maxine Waters, the first thing she taught me was documentation is everything. As I told you, she helped get my first job. And we had to go to her class. So the first thing she taught was documentation is everything. I told you about Judge Stevens of the Los Angeles County Superior Court, who said in 2002 that he didn't know of an attorney who could have done a better job than I had done in documenting everything. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I took those skills that I've been learning over the years in providing documentation. You should see the amount of files that I have. When it comes to files and documentation, I'm a hoarder because I have records from 40 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and they're not all on computer. With that being said, we are documenting everything from step one to step, step Z so that nobody can come in and say that they have a preponderance of evidence to the contrary of what we have. See, we have evidence. They have presumptions. They're going to put in their statements. We're not putting in statements. We're just documenting the record. So defeat the record. There's a rule. You cannot rebut the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a rule. You cannot rebut the truth. So when you have the truth, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to explain it. That's why I said the documents will speak for themselves. The record will speak for themselves. What's been filed on the record will speak for themselves. The proof of what's been filed will speak for themselves. So you won't have to do any speaking other than relying on the foundation that is your paperwork. As I told the one guy, he's in, uh, uh-oh, let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of that yet. The one guy who's incarcerated here in California. He wrote a promissory note under that very same act that we're talking about. And they wanted to get him for 
passing a fictitious instrument. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you two things that he did. He used the routing number of the treasury. We stopped using the routing number of the treasury back in 2012. However, the routing number of the treasury is just an address. <laughs> it's not their property. Okay, just because you use a routing number doesn't make it a check. A routing number doesn't make an item a check. Go back and look at the definition of a check, and it has nothing to do with a routing number. It has nothing to do with an account number. Go and look at the definition of what a check is. But many of you who will do things like that don't know the law, so they can play games with you. But this guy, to make sure that he couldn't speak in court like the guy that uh, I think it was during the Christmas parade, um, killed about six people, and they're saying he did it on purpose and he was going for mental insanity, uh, he'll probably win that because he represented himself and the judge kept speaking about his mental instability during the trial, so he might be a lot smarter than you guys think he is. Okay, because on appeal... If he allows an attorney to take over, I think they can definitely get that sentence that the judge will hand down, talking about she felt afraid of him. She was, if, if he, and I don't think he is, but if he is as smart as I think he is, then it would have been an ingenious demonstration. Because the news and everybody was talking about how bizarre his representation was. And they kept using that word bizarre. Ladies and gentlemen, you won't have to go through any such thing. But like the guy here in California, what they did with him is they had him seen by a psychiatrist in the jail system. And the psychiatrist held him as incompetent. The psychiatrist works for the jail and the psychiatrist said he's incompetent. And the court appointed him attorney and said he was incompetent. And thus, that's it. Law says there must be a competency hearing. Law says there must be a competency hearing, especially here in California, before someone can be held incompetent. The hearing the judge had, the doctor already said he was incompetent, not good enough. The judge never questioned him on the stand or not otherwise. Sorry, not good enough. That's not the way due process works. So I've taken care of some documents for the young man to get rid of all of the presumptions. You all won't have to go through all of that because your documents will already have all of the facts. It will already have the law. And nobody's going to be putting anybody in anybody's confinement for the documentation we're using because we will be following the law. There will be no routing numbers on any documents, no fraudulent check issues. There will be no instruments being filed or anything like that. There will be no money orders or anything like that. We will just be documenting the record of what the record says when a property is already paid for. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why there will not be any instruments filed is because the collateral security has already been offered and accepted. It's called offer and acceptance. Pay attention. Offered and accepted. And there was no timely dishonor of the acceptance of the collateral. Some of you are hearing the words I'm using and you're beginning to understand that these are the words of the UCC. That's what we've done. So, because there is offer and acceptance, there's nothing they can do. Now, we could have kept this information that I'm telling you right now to ourselves, but it's not about that. We're just here to let you know that what we're doing, we're following their laws. We're not creating our own. We're not arguing. We're not coming up with no angles. That's why I said you can even get rid of this whole anything, but it doesn't make sense. How can a Federal Reserve Bank apply to the Federal Reserve agent <laughs> for Federal Reserve notes and the very same Federal Reserve Bank be the one who issues the Federal Reserve notes? Do you understand? Do you see how that wouldn't make sense if it was any Federal Reserve Bank applying to a Federal Reserve agent when it's the Federal Reserve Bank that issues the Federal Reserve notes and it's the Federal Reserve Bank that requires, see, additional security to protect the Federal Reserve notes issued to it. So the Federal Reserve System, the Board of Governors, can ask for the Federal Reserve 
uh, call upon the Federal Reserve Bank for additional securities. Which Federal Reserve Bank? I thought they were the Federal Reserve Bank. Interesting, ain't it? So it wouldn't make any sense if that was the case, but let's say there's some stupid judge or some stupid attorney that will sit up here and suggest that this ain't you. Well, it doesn't have to be you because the process is whenever you have a note, which is the collateral security, and an application, it's and it's for the application of Federal Reserve notes, i.e. a loan, then this is the section that applies. See? Application for notes. So that being the case, this is the section that applies. Now the unique thing about it is, when a collateral security is offered, along with the application, it is for the total sum and the amount, that's tender. See? Tender. That is tender. Look up what tender of payment is, ladies and gentlemen, because this constitutes a payment when you present the note. And you do it in front of witnesses. That's interesting. So how come they didn't document the record as receiving this collateral? You receive banking statements all the time, don't you? So call your bank, ask them for a statement. And notice that this collateral is nowhere on the statement. Well, that's fraud. Because they don't have to keep an accurate accounting. So, ladies and gentlemen, we take care of that issue. Okay? So, with the official start of the organization and the official start of the website, oh, I was on the web page, so now I got to, um, I think it's here. Sorry, got to go back to the web page. What you'll do is you'll click on the service offer because that's all Amer American Mortgage correction foundation real estate private foundational trust organization artful that's all they're there for they're there to provide a service to you of documenting the record at the current time we are assisting like i said it adds a couple of things in like the two t's and that extra space that will be taken care of those who are pre-foreclosure meaning that you have not received a notice of foreclosure from anyone claiming to represent the lender very shortly, we will begin to help those dealing with um, car loans, student loans. Car loans will be doing as of November 1st, student loans as of November 15th, and foreclosures as of December 15th. So we're not leaving you out. Here is some advice. If you're facing foreclosure, if you have a foreclosure that is due to happen within the next couple of weeks, next couple of days, you will wait a week. Uh, before the foreclosure, a week, can only be done once, a week before the foreclosure, you will call up the mortgage company and say, hey, I need to do a loan modification. Just that simple. I need to do a loan modification. They have to stop foreclosure proceedings by law. Now, remember, you cannot have had done that before, okay? You're protected for the first time if you ask for a loan modification. You ask for a loan modification, that's all she wrote. It's one of those, que sera, sera, okay? That's all she wrote. And that will give you the extension of time so that you will be able to apply for the program so that we can come in and assist you with the rest. Now, for those of you who have already asked for a loan modification, then what we're going to suggest you do, and... This will work the first time. The second time, you're going to have to pay. You're going to go into bankruptcy court. You're going to go and file for bankruptcy. Chapter 7. You're going to go to the clerk, and you're going to hand them the fee waiver. What fee waiver? The one from the federal district court. And you're going to present the fee waiver. They're going to tell you, well, we don't accept fee waivers here. No, nope, that's not true. You're part of the district court. See? It says district court. So if the district court accepts fee waivers, so do you, because you're a part of the district court. Equal protection of law. And I'd rather have the judge make that decision. <laughs> you're just a filer. It's the judge who makes these decisions. So could you please step out of the way and let the judge make the decision? That will stop the foreclosure automatically. Okay? But you're not going to go through with that bankruptcy. Because you're not prepared. Now you can try. But you're not going to go through with that bankruptcy because you're not prepared. Again, we are putting together the packet for you to go ahead and take care of the matter. 
to get it. And you won't have to do no, uh, what's that stupid thing called? Uh, quiet title. You won't have to do a quiet title. This will be your quiet title without going to some stupid court. You're not going to have to worry about nobody saying, Your Honor, they failed to state a claim whereby relief may be granted. So I need you to dismiss this matter. You're not going to have to face those arguments. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is to use their system to your best interest, not theirs. I keep telling everybody, you take what they have and you use it to your benefit. So, when you come to the site, you will notice we did redid this section um, because we needed you to see what everything it said. The process will take roughly three to six months to complete. Just that simple. It really is just that simple. Now, that's on averages. In some instances, it may take a little longer, but not much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, will you regularly communicate with us once I sign up? The answer is yes. And then it is our job to keep. It's supposed to be in communication with you during this process. And we will do so in the event of needing further information or advising you of anything of any necessary importance. Can it's supposed to be, I stop paying my mortgage while this process is going on. No. No, you'll keep paying if you've been paying. And this is for the people who are current on their mortgage. If you've been paying your mortgage, keep paying it for now. Now, see, although the law says that when you tendered the note in the application, it was paid less than 90 days after such tendering. However, we still need to prove this. So until then, you are to continue to make the payments. Just that simple. Literally, just that simple. Then it talks about the limited power of attorney. So it talks about all the things you're going to be expected to take care of right there. Then here on the pricing, again, it tells you that we will be doing a 50% recovery fee of all fees and funds paid. Now, what you don't understand, even though we'll be doing a recovery fee, you get to do a credit for that overpayment. So you'll end up getting that back on taxes. However, we have to do that as a company because we are discounting this. We're charging 0.5% of the fee, well, actually 0.005%, apologize, of the fee that we would normally charge. Ha <laughs> ha. Like all of our organizations, we're not here to make a profit. So none of our organizations make a profit. Why? Because we're not trying to get over on people. Again, 580, one time, there is no other, oh, you need to pay this, and you need to pay that, and you need to give us this, you know, because companies do that to people. Oh, well, we ain't, we ain't doing nothing else until you pay us another, an additional $5,500 or $1,500. Do you want to get your property or not? I promise you will never go through that with us. That's not the way things work. The payment link is here at the bottom, here at the bottom, here at the bottom of each link. Please, in your best interest, do, interest, do not pay until the due date for the payment when we start the program. Doing it before then will only cause you not to be put at the front of the list. Just because you paid in advance doesn't mean you go up to the very front of the list. That's not the way it is. This section right here explains why the 50 percent recovery fee and then who will benefit from what we do and this talks about all the different people and all the different situations that will benefit and you get to click and find out the different aspects of that beneficial now some of this you may or may not be able to read so as I said before you have to click on it and do that and you should be able to read everything so highlight the whole section right there, and you'll be able to read it despite the pictures. Sorry, I like the pictures personally, and that's why you see pictures on my website. I do not like white blank pages. That doesn't make any sense. Okie dokie. All right, thank you, everyone. We ask that you have a good day, and thank you for letting me take the time this morning, basically a little bit over 50 minutes, uh, to do this video at three o'clock in my morning and hopefully sorry i got to get rid of that before i can do this oh fifth 44 minutes so 
hopefully this information will be a benefit to all of you. There'll be further videos in the future where we'll be putting up the videos. Oh, section 412. We don't want you using 12 USC 412. Stick to the 59 statute at large, page 237. We'll be changing this, but page 237 at subsection number 2. That's what you want to stick with. That's your friend. Do not believe in all the other junk. Okay? That's your friend. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a very good day.